Greetings and salutations, the face behind the ink. Doing some illustration work right here. It's been a while since I've made one of these kinds of videos. I don't have the face for it. Not one bit. There it is. The, uh, The bit about the, uh, <laughs> you'll eat the bugs and be happy, or you won't own anything and you'll be happy and you'll eat the bugs and live in your pod. It's, if a five-year-old was to write a dystopian science fiction short story, that would be precisely what they would write. I mean, it's, it's only slightly more, it's scary, I mean, to realize that there are NGOs and governments out there infected by these NGOs that are uh, so influenced by this abject madness. But still, I mean, you, you'll eat the bugs and and be happy, and you'll own nothing and be happy. This is this is five-year-old utopianism, absurdism. It's funny, it's terrifying, but it's still funny. And so the illustration here is the first of several in a story called The Carriers. I won't get too much into the detail of The Carriers. I will be doing a reading of The Carriers. Um, I have a substack. It's free. So bear that in mind. My substack is a free subscription. I'm not out to charge for something that isn't necessarily a finished product, but still, anyway. Uh, there are snippets of uh, fiction that I've written on my substack. The Dissident Reservation, how modern, isn't it? And to explain it, uh, the dissident reservation, I reserve the right to be a dissident, so to speak. And I've always been kind of on the outside of things, even growing up. I wasn't, I wasn't, so people say they're outsiders but are they really outsiders they are part of a group you got the the geeks and the jocks and you got the goths and the metalheads and all that but the true outsider doesn't even have a group within these divergent groups in school and i'm certain i'm certain that i would be part of such a group if I stayed in the school long enough. And there's no creature on earth that, uh, that uh, is as suspicious of strangers as a child. Yeah, they're gregarious and they're open and they're friendly. But among their tribe, the children, the tribe of the child, it's from my experience that there's no entity on earth that is as, as, a, as suspicious of the outsider as the child. When I mean, you look at the pecking orders and the hen pecking and all that that's in in groups and out groups and whatnot that's in schools.
and that doesn't have anything really specific to have it to do with anything other than <clears throat> I've always been relatively a dissident in stature. I've, I've befriended several outcast types, several people who like to parlay themselves as members of an outcast, the outsiders, and even then I get on their nerves. My parents were outsiders. They were, I suppose you could call them natural born outsiders. I suppose in the grand scheme of the Great Reset and all these things that all, that all have, have unfolded and will unfold in the world, my parents were natural born wage slaves and I suppose that's where my, uh, that's my fate, so to speak. Not to be, not to be depressing, but you know, the person with such a long face. Long face. Always looking so gloomy, so sad. So woe be gone. That'll do it. You know. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, Substack is the Dissident Reservation. Yes, it's got my real name. It has my real name. Why not? And that kind of brings up another little thing as I'm sitting there going dot 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 with all these little dots of ink. Little dots of ink everywhere. You'd think he had stubble and five o'clock shadow growing on his hands. The, uh, there are some science fiction stories that I will, not that I'm teasing any, anyone, not that anyone cares to be teased, uh, that I do plan to write under a pseudonym. Provided, of course, the powers that be ruling this world into the ground don't make such an act impossible. But they are stories of a sensitive nature. And that subject is not the point here on this video. Kind of testing out another camera. Won't get into that. It seems ultimately pointless to brag about what camera is and what camera isn't. You know, Tim Pool started his career with a cell phone, the single most powerful weapon in all of modern Earth, the cell phone, the single most influential and powerful thing. It has influenced levels of debauchery and degeneracy beyond belief, and it has inspired the passage of information across the globe that has never ever been seen since the advent of the printing press. And of course there are flip phones and the average run-of-the-mill you know call and text phone but the smartphone to have something that 40 years ago would have filled a building in your pocket. A super kip here, in your pocket. It's a remarkable thing. It is a remarkable thing. But, back to the bugs, back to the pods. This story is on that theme.
It's dystopian, obviously. You know, the way the world's going, you never know, it might be a prognostication of things to come. That's not the intention. But I figured I'd bore people to death with another time lapse. Kind of boring. And this is tedious work. When there are scores and scores of programs and apps and all sorts of other more convenient ways of illustrating a short story or a novel. Why go through this horrific process? Oh. It is what it is. And this gentleman here, <clears throat> living in an underground tunnel system in the community, he has found himself a bug, crawling in the dark, minding its own business, and he grabs a hold of it, and he's enthusiastic beyond belief because it's, he struck it rich. It's a thing to behold. And he's trying to figure out how to contain it. How to keep it away from the prying eyes of the authorities. How to keep it and what to do with it. So, anyway, I just wanted to post this video. One of the cameras, their battery is dying, so I'm going to conclude this. It's long enough as it is. I've appropriately bored enough people. So, anyway, thank you for watching. Maybe, maybe on the next video I will <clears throat> be more to the point. Have a good one.